warning of a worsening border crisis. Republicans press the Biden administration. And today's Iris Tao has more from Capitol Hill. Republicans giving fresh warnings to the Biden administration over illegal immigration. Congresswoman Yvette Harrell wrote Tuesday that if officials won't even try to secure the country, they can, quote, explain themselves to congressional investigations soon. And that's as other Republicans on Wednesday point to potential terrorists coming into the U.S. Of all those uh, folks that they've apprehended at the border, there have been 78 people apprehended in this last year that were on the terrorist watch list, which is five times the, um, the amount that they've had in the last five years combined. Others cite an inflow of fentanyl. So over 100,000 Americans dead from fentanyl brought in by drug cartels. 14 House Republicans recently sent a letter to the administration saying how Venezuelan migrants have been flooding U.S. border towns and cities, particularly El Paso, Texas. And that's after Congressman Troy Nelds, citing a confirmation he got from the Department of Homeland Security, revealed that Venezuela was emptying its prisons and sending criminals to the U.S. southern border. And Republicans have been warning that if they take back the majority in November... Well, we will give Secretary Mayorkas a reserved parking spot. He will be testifying so much about this. Meanwhile, Democrats on Wednesday blamed Republicans for a lack of change. The reason we haven't had bipartisan immigration reform is Republicans don't want to do immigration reform. And President Biden announced a new plan in June to address the border situation. It focuses on working with other countries to ease the burden. But in recent months, encounters at the southern border have remained at around 200,000 a month. And in this fiscal year, a record 2 million illegal immigrants have crossed the southern border. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Aris Tao, NTD News. The Biden administration is keeping the cap on refugees at 125,000 for 2023. This is the same from a year ago. Texas Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar has been criticizing President Biden for his border policies. Here's what he told Fox News. We believe in the border and law and order. We certainly believe in immigration reform. But what people want to see is a legal way for people coming in. The cap on refugees is for fiscal year 2023, which starts this Saturday. The figure includes 40,000 slots for refugees coming from Africa, 15,000 for those from East Asia, 15,000 for those from Europe and Central Asia, and 15,000 for refugees from Latin America another 35,000 for South Asia, as well as 5,000 unallocated spots. The cap was at 15,000 under former President Trump. Biden raised it to 62,000 and then to 125,000 throughout his term. But the U.S. has only admitted less than 20,000 refugees this current fiscal year. That's not counting some 180,000 refugees from Afghanistan and Ukraine who are admitted under a different program for only two years. We know that China works to steal U.S. intellectual property, but now some say the communist regime could be the main beneficiary of key American tech research funds. Senator Joni Ernst is sounding the alarm on an internal Pentagon report that sheds light on the issue. Here's NTD's Melina Wisecup with more. An internal Pentagon report reveals that, quote, nearly all cases show that China, not the U.S., is the ultimate beneficiary of DOD and other U.S. government research investments, some of which are significant in size. That's according to a report from the Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS, and cited by Senator Joni Ernst. And this is not new. It's been going on for decades. A report by the Center for Strategic and International Studies reveals that this has been going on since at least 1980. Um, that report shows that Chinese scholars has been, have been monitoring this specific program, the Small Business Innovation Research Program. We caught up with Senator Ernst earlier today, and she explained why it's important for them to continue to expose this and solutions moving forward. Because obviously we don't want taxpayer dollars going into research and development and then handing over that information to the Chinese. We are basically taking taxpayer dollars, developing technology for our own use here in the United States for national security, and then turning it over to the Chinese, where they can reverse engineer a lot of that technology and use it for their own purposes, maybe against the United States. 
Essentially, American companies get tax dollars from the Pentagon for technology development. Those companies are then recruited by China to continue their work at institutions associated with the People's Liberation Army. Ernst, in a statement to the Epoch Times, cited an example from the internal Pentagon report. A researcher and the co-founders of a now-dissolved company that received four grants to develop technology for spacecraft and drones, for example, were allegedly recruited by the Chinese government and now work for institutions affiliated with the communist regime's defense agency. Senator Ernst says the solution is not to defund these research programs, but instead we need to do better at developing more security measures and guardrails to prevent this from happening moving forward. And she's not alone in calling for these changes. Senator Rand Paul has also called for similar measures, but he has went so far as to threaten um, not recertifying these programs unless these changes are made. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Wisecup, NTD News. As winter approaches and European countries scramble for alternative energy resources, EU officials are blaming the Nord Stream pipeline leaks on Russia and the U.S. saying it's sabotage. A former CIA station chief agrees. And today's Arlene Richards reports. In August, Russia cut off gas supplies from Nord Stream 1, Europe's main pipeline, blaming economic sanctions for the shutdown. But now Nord Stream 1 and 2 are leaking. Leaders in Norway and Sweden say the leaks are sabotage, though the cause is still under investigation. Some EU officials are blaming Russia as well as the U.S. I spoke to former CIA station chief Scott Eulinger about what's going on. Could either U.S. or Russia be to blame for the pipelines that are leaking? Russia could possibly have done this themselves, Putin sabotaged it, as a way of showing the Russian people and maybe certain oligarchs that there is no going back to the way the world was prior to the invasion of Ukraine. And by doing this, he would also make more difficult the possibility of a negotiated peace settlement. Eulinger said the leaks don't give Putin any leverage with Europe because Russia depends on the money to beef up its military. But this could help him in other ways. And also, this is a way for Putin to signal that for if should another Russian leader try to take over in some kind of coup d'etat or something, that that Russian leader would be similarly hamstringed by this because Russia depends on or depended on the influx of European cash via those pipelines. Tuesday, the U.S. Secretary of State met with the Danish foreign minister about the leaks. The U.S. says based on reports issued by European officials, the leaks appear to be acts of sabotage and that America will support the EU in its investigation. The U.S. press secretary pointed out that the pipelines aren't pumping gas. Nord Stream 2 uh, was never operational, and uh, NS1 has been shut down for weeks because of, of how Russia is uh, weaponizing uh, energy. But Eulinger said it could be the U.S. who sabotaged the pipelines. Germany has always been perhaps the weakest partner in the coalition, the informal coalition against Russia. Germany has always been very lukewarm because it is very dependent on Russian energy. So it has only sort of reluctantly gone along and followed France, Britain, and the rest of NATO's lead, or the United States, in sanctioning Russia and supporting Ukraine. Because the pipeline has been partially destroyed, this prevents Germany from backing down, from being the weak sister of NATO trying to negotiate some kind of deal for itself to uh, basically enhance its own energy security. Biden said in February that he would end the Nord Stream 2 pipeline if Russia went through with the invasion. Germany was in control of the project. They agreed to halt it in February by denying the necessary certification. Arlene Richards, NTD News, New York. And joining us to discuss the latest trends in energy prices and policies, we have James Taylor, president of Heartland Institute. James Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. James, we've seen quite a swing in gas prices over the past several months. Uh, what is your overall forecast uh, moving forward? Well, gasoline prices should be dropping substantially and rapidly, considering that we're in a recession. Uh, one that's lingering and likely to get worse. The fact that we still see gasoline prices up close to $4 per gallon nationally is a reflection of Biden administration policies that are doing everything possible 
to suppress American oil and uh, natural gas production. So for the future, it's really what's going to win out. Is the recession going to be strong enough to keep uh, prices falling? Or are the Biden policies that are deliberately raising energy prices going to prevail? Either way, it's going to be high gas prices. James, I have to ask you, what uh, impact, if any, will Hurricane Ian have on gas prices? A well, small impact, uh, mostly temporary. The oil uh, production in the Gulf of Mexico is in the western portion of the Gulf. You may see some of the producers shutting down their rigs for a day or two, but uh, that's just a temporary spike. And President Biden gave a warning uh, today to oil and gas industry, the oil and gas industry regarding this. Uh, take a listen. So forgive me, I want to add one more warning. That's warning to the oil and gas industry executives. Do not, let me repeat, do not, do not use this as an excuse to raise gasoline prices or gouge the American people. What's your reaction? The Biden administration has been using every excuse under the sun to raise gasoline prices for the American people for two years. Uh, blaming the oil companies is preposterous. The wholesale price of oil has more than doubled under the Biden administration. Fortunately, gasoline prices are only, and I say that word only uh, deliberately, up a little more than 50 percent under his administration. If gasoline prices were rising at the pace of the uh, price of oil, we would see gasoline prices right now up around six or seven dollars per gallon. So don't blame the oil companies, Joe. Just look in the mirror. James, if I could just get your thoughts before I let you go on uh, Nord Stream, uh, the implications. Well, it's a very interesting and still uh, in flux situation. Uh, it appears if I had to make a guess speculating, this is something that uh, the Russians did. Uh, but it's more uh, reacting to the fact that they're shutting down natural gas deliveries to Europe. Uh, the disruption of the pipeline means that the Russians perhaps won't be held accountable for backing out of contracts. They can claim that this occurred so they cannot fulfill their contracts legally. But really what it shows us is that we should be producing more oil and natural gas here in the United States. We should be facilitating the export of oil and natural gas to Europe where this is necessary. And yet we still have a Biden administration that's doing everything possible to suppress our production of oil and natural gas. Fascinating stuff. James Taylor, thank you so much. Thank you. The U.S. Embassy in Moscow issued a security alert overnight urging U.S. citizens to leave Russia immediately. The embassy is asking U.S. citizens to take the opportunity to leave while they still can. The alert was issued in the wake of Russian President Putin's order mobilizing Russian men to fight in Ukraine. The U.S. Embassy said that dual U.S. nationals may be denied access to U.S. consular assistance. They may also be prevented from departing Russia and could be conscripted for military service. The alert said that the U.S. Embassy has very limited ability to help U.S. citizens. Conditions in Russia, including transportation out of the country, may become severely limited. Catholic pro-life activist Mark Hauk is pleading not guilty to federal charges after the FBI raided his home. Joining us to discuss, we have Hans von Spakovsky, senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Hans von Spakovsky, thank you so much for joining us. Sure, thanks for having me. Hans, the DOJ has arrested a Catholic pro-life activist, Mark Hoke, um, with an FBI SWAT team, no less. Uh, what can you tell us about this so far? And uh, was this an extreme use of force, in your opinion? Well, the facts that we have to date, yes, it, it was an unnecessary use of force. And the entire uh, prosecution and indictment of him seems way overboard. Uh, he prays and speaks regularly outside of a Planned Parenthood clinic. Uh, about a year ago, apparently, uh, there was a confrontation with an escort, someone who uh, escorts women into the abortion clinic. Uh, this escort, on multiple occasions, was cursing and saying nasty things about Mr. Houck, including to his 12-year-old son, who Mr. Houck would often take with him. And apparently, about a year ago, this uh, foul mouthed vulgarian got right down in the face of his son and was saying all kinds of nasty things about his father. And in order to protect his son, Mr. Houck pushed the escort away from his son. The escort fell down. Uh, he had uh, apparently had almost he had no injury. He had like a band aid for his finger. Uh, a year later, 
he is indicted, Mr. Houck is indicted on two felony charges for this incident, supposedly violating the FACE Act. That's the Freedom of Access to Clinics Act. Uh, I, I think this is uh, not a real case. Uh, think about this. The district attorney in Philadelphia refused to file any criminal charges. The civil lawsuit filed by this escort was thrown out of court. And yet now a year later, all of a sudden, the Justice Department jumps in and shows up at Mr. Houck's door with uh, guns drawn and two dozen FBI agents. Lots of very interesting points, Hans. I mean, you just mentioned that the uh, civil case was thrown out. How did we get here? And more importantly, how to reverse course? Well, we got here because we have uh, an attorney general, Merrick Garland, who apparently sees no problem with weaponizing the Justice Department and using it against political opponents of the administration and the progressives who, who populated him. I mean, look, just go back at what last year when he formed a task force uh, labeling parents who are upset over uh, propaganda being taught to their kids and, the, and they show up at school boards to question it. He, he wanted to label them as domestic terrorists. That tells you a lot about him. But also we clearly have problems in the FBI. The head of the FBI should not have gone along with this. Uh, this. This is a use of law enforcement in a way that it should not be used. And frankly, it's shocking and should scare a lot of Americans. Hans, we're seeing lawmakers speaking out, writing letters, yes. ordering the preservation of documents. What would you like to see a Republican majority in Congress do to address this uh, issue? Uh, what can they do? Uh, I think they need to have intensive oversight uh, hearings. Uh, and, and by intensive oversight hearings, I mean not just looking at this incident, but looking at all the other uh, problems we have seen. Their misbehavior in the uh, Russia-Trump collusion hoax investigation, their treatment of General Michael Flynn. I mean, all you have to do is look at the Inspector General report that was issued by the Justice Department Inspector General about the Russia-Trump investigation, and it's filled with incidents uh, and citations to all kinds of misbehavior, not only by the FBI, but by Justice Department officials, too. Uh, I, I think it, that requires intense oversight and, frankly, looking at per, perhaps reforms and legislative changes uh, of the inside of the FBI. Hans von Spakovsky, thank you. Thanks for having me.